Um, I worry about rookie corners. I worry about lack of pass rush. And I worry about going against the San Francisco offense. Now, we think defense here when you think San Francisco, especially, you know, with Nick Bosa going against Evan Neal. That's a tough one. That is really a tough one. And Daniel's going to have to be on, you know, a, the, the awareness is going to have to be sky high. He's going to have to play smart, as he always, or as he did last week anyway. Um, I could see this being um, one of two things. It's Thursday night, so it could be a slop fest, uh, number, uh, number one. And number two... Uh, you can throw the ball if you have time against the 49ers. We've seen that already this year. And number three, uh, you know, how are you going to stop Christian McCaffrey? They are undefeated in the regular season with, with Christian McCaffrey in the starting lineup. And that's saying something. When they made that trade for him last year, it was like the perfect complement to their offense and to Brock Purdy. And Brock Purdy is off to a you know, pretty decent start. I give him a B-plus the first two games. Um, and that's going to be another aspect of this game. Can they get pressure on him? Because nobody's really gotten much pressure on him. Even, uh, you know, with T.J. Watt had three sacks against him, but he didn't fumble the ball like Deshaun Watson did. Yeah, and this is a game where the Giants, when they usually go up against an opponent like this in recent memory, so three out of their last four games, if we're going to include this game, have been against the NFC's top teams. So we haven't seen them play this game yet, but we did see them lose in the playoffs to the Philadelphia Eagles. We saw them get run over by the Dallas Cowboys. You had the Arizona Cardinals in there last week where they had to come back from three touchdowns. And now you get the San Francisco 49ers. So if you're just going to go on recent memory, what happens to the Giants when they face the top teams in the conference, they get their asses kicked. It's not even close. All right, so... Um... You know, I know you love your quarterback, Kirk Cousins, and you love his primetime, you know, uh, his primetime record, right? Uh, yeah, it's terrible. I don't love his primetime record. It's oh, horrendous. It's what are you talking so, about? Yeah. Well, Daniel Jones in primetime is 1-10. in 10. So, uh, I don't know. And he also, his numbers dip significantly without Saquon Barkley in the game. Yeah. I, this is something. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's two things, you know, going here. I mean, like, it is Thursday Night Football. If it were a Monday night, um, it, I think you could catch them, you know, maybe a little bit looking ahead or maybe thinking, nah, this is one of the worst teams in the league. And then next you go out, you you play a great game. But I just, I don't see it, man, right now. And you can see the numbers on the screen for us. Yeah. Yeah, one in ten, non prime time, twenty one, twenty two, and one. I mean, it's just ugly. 12. It's not his fault. I mean, I mean, some well, of them played for some miserable teams too. Yeah, I mean, listen, right. you know, prior to last year, they were a losing team and really bad, one of the worst in football. So much so that they were picking in the top of the draft year after year after year. So uh, that has to be added in there, some well, context. And if they're playing on prime time, that when they were bad, it means that the team that they were playing was probably pretty good. Right. And the other thing too, with Saquon Barkley in the lineup they are 46 and 20 with Daniel Jones with Saquon Barkley out of the lineup they're 16 and 17 well they've won some games if you want to look glass half full they won 16 games without him so uh, you could look at it like that yeah this is going to be a, a tall order Brandon Ayuk for the 49ers is a huge playmaker for them is going to be a game time decision he had a shoulder injury last week against the Rams. He ended up playing through it, but on a short week in a game where you're favored by 10 and a half points, you're going to throw him back that out there. I don't know because he's probably not going to be a hundred percent healthy uh, because of the Thursday night game that I, sneaks up on you in a couple of days. But I mean, I, I it's, it's tough, man. I, I I'm trying to make a case for it, but everything is going against it. And we really haven't seen yet in the first two weeks, that massive upset in the NFL things. There's been some upsets, not a massive one like this. And also there's, there's three spots this week where I would be shocked if the underdog won. one is this game. Two is the Cardinals against the Cowboys. That's in Arizona, right? Yes, it is, but still. Yep. And three, the Chicago Bears, who might be in the lowest point of any team that you're going to see this season in this moment right now, uh, travel to Kansas City. They got. They have an issue. They have. They have two issues. You know, of course, they have the Allen Williams. Their defense coordinator was arrested by the FBI. The FBI raided his home. Uh, usually when the FBI is involved, uh, the, the you want to say crimes uh, that he is allegedly committed are going to be significant. Yeah. Uh, and they could be ugly. 
Um, the other thing, too, is, is that you have Justin Fields out there now b- blaming his coaches for uh, his problems here early on in the season, and he's just going to go out there and play his his brand of game. Well, he walked all of that back, but yes, initially he just threw that out there. He goes, well, you know, why are you struggling? He goes, I'd say coaching. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but, come on, man. What he didn't really walk back, though, is, um, you yeah. know, he wants to go out there and play his game, meaning, you know, he's an athletic quarterback. He wants to run around and and he doesn't want to go through his progressions and he just wants to go out and make plays. Well, you can't play the NFL that way. I'm sorry. You can't. You could, you could, you know, you could make some broken plays. They can call some plays for you to use your athleticism. But, you know, he threw a screen pass on the one yard line last week and it was intercept and it was intercepted for a touchdown. You know, one a one yard interception return for a touchdown. That's something Zach Wilson would do, right? And so he is now saying he's going to play his game, and I'm like, what? Uh, what is that? I mean, I don't know what that game is. Well, I mean, that I mean, game are, are is. Gonna, are we going to study? Or are we going to make sure that we know what's going on? And yeah, that, and we can call plays, and we can process the uh, the progression because if you go back and you look at the films and you look at his performance, there are people that are open on tape now. Why he doesn't see them? If there's somebody in the way or He's not reading it pr- uh, properly or not, you know, processing the defenses prof- properly, you know, that that they know that internally. And I think it's one of the reasons why Ryan Poles, their G- GM now, is scouting all these college quarterbacks because he feels like he's going to need one. Well, yeah, I think, of they, course. I think the bloom is completely off the rose for this young man. And much like with Zach Wilson, he's going to be fighting a lot of negative perception. Yeah, and going into Kansas City is not going to be uh, an easy thing. Uh, so anyway, back to uh, the Giants tonight and the 49ers. Can Daniel Jones do what he did in the second half against the Cardinals, against the 49ers in their home opener on a Thursday night? And and that, that to me, is, is the biggest question out of all of it. And it might not even come down to just him because obviously he's without Saquon Barkley. He was without two starting offensive linemen. And you're facing Nick Bosa, who hasn't had a sack yet. So he's going to want to be going crazy with that home crowd behind him tonight. I I just don't know if he's going to be capable of being the superhero that he was in the second half against the Cardinals in this particular situation. Well, I mean, it's not just him. I mean, the defense has got to get off the field. And they're going to have to stop one of the best offenses, one of the most creative play designers. And I'm sure uh, Kyle Shanahan's looking at this and he's seeing very little pass rush. So, you know, you go into a game, you you assess your opponent, and you're like, okay, you know what? They haven't gotten a lot of pass rush. So, and Ojalari is out. Right, so they're not getting a lot of pass rush. So that means we may have a tick more time. That means we can do different things on offense in terms of our uh, play design, especially when it comes to passing. You know, it's not like we're going to be under duress like we would be if we were playing maybe the Washington Commanders, the way that the uh, Broncos were under duress. You know, Montez Sweat. <laughs> for the Washington Commanders had 14 pressures on Russell Wilson in one game. 14. Denver's defense has 13 in two games. Montez Sweat had 14 in one game. Yep, pretty good. And, and you know, that doesn't bode well for the AFC East because the defensive line for the Commanders seems to be as active as any in the NFL right now. Yeah, and the Giants are as inactive as anybody in the NFL right now. And Kayvon Thibodeau had zero sacks, zero tackles against the Arizona Cardinals. And it's he is someone that everybody is going to be looking at. If Brock Purdy is going up and down the field with this offense and there's no pressure there, especially with Ojolari out, Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be under a huge microscope. You add the story about him sulking at the end of the bench. If you want to believe his meditation bullcrap, go ahead. I don't. You hear him talking about how he's no tackles and no sacks was by design. I think Jerry will have that cut coming up by in design. a little bit. Yeah, that's I mean, like, apparently. No, I know you're a defensive player. The design is to actually make a tackle yeah. or have a sack or get involved with a tip ball or force fumble or something like that. Yeah, so he's saying so that's he the— said, He actually said— Yeah, so— yeah, it's bizarre. It was like his statistics uh, reflect his responsibility. Yeah, apparently. Essentially. Yeah. So this is going to be a lot of people are going to be staring at Evan Neal. These are the two guys that you're going to if if things don't go well for the Giants tonight, the two guys who will be trending on Twitter will be Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau.
You can lock that one up. Top 10 picks. I could guarantee right? you that's where the fan base is going to go. Nick Bosa bowling over Evan Neal, heading towards Daniel Jones like a runaway train, and Kayvon Thibodeau getting swallowed up by the 49ers offensive line and making zero impact. You know, it's interesting watching some of the tape from that Arizona Giant game. There are situations where... The Arizona defensive line on the defense's left, the offensive right. So that would be Evan Neal's side. Mm -hmm. You know, they were running like a, a what I would call is like a pinch stunt, where the end was coming down in front of the tackle. Oh, I love when you break it down. Okay. It turns me on. Right. I know. I know. Pinch like, stunt. Right. Ooh. So, so here you have Evan Neal, who is like going down with the end that is crashing down. Yeah. To, to the left guard, and for some reason, Evan Neal. Let's him go to the left guard, and then turns out, and there's nobody there. And and there's pressure on Daniel Jones. Now he runs out of the pressure uh, because he's a great athlete and he has a sense and he sees it. You know, he's got an awareness about him. But Evan, Evan Neal is just like standing there, and I'm and I'm just wondering what he saw, why he did what he did to allow that pressure to happen so quickly. Yeah, you know what's funny? I know exactly what you're talking about, and the CBS Sports. Instagram account tweeted this play out and none other, none other than our own Tiki Barber responded with an answer for what you're looking for. Now, okay. I had no idea you were going to bring this up here, so I don't have it ready. All right. Well, we could talk about that after the break. Yeah, we could, or I could find it quickly on here, but yeah, it was, it, it looks horrible. It absolutely right. I, looks I mean, horrible. like, there's got to be a sense of what's happening. I don't know if he thought that there was a blitz. I don't know if Daniel Jones audible to a different pass protection. Those are all potential possibilities in this situation. But it, does, it doesn't make any sense the way that the defense is lined up and what the defense is doing. And to me, it looks like it's going to be what they would call a, you know, end tackle stunt, like a – a crashing down end with a defensive tackle coming around where he would have to be standing there waiting for that guy. And maybe maybe the defensive line for the Arizona Cardinals screwed it up. Yeah, and so I found it. The video has the caption, I don't know what the plan was here. And they it says Evan Neal got lost in the matrix with a laughing emoji. So Tiki Barber responds with RG and RT, right guard and right tackle, the Keithon and Neil are responsible for the stand-up three tech and edge. Oh boy, we're really getting into it today. Oh, I love it. Yeah. The dogging nickel. The dogging nickel. Right. Number 22, Kayvon Wallace, belongs to the running back, Saquon. Right tackle stabs down on the three tech. Told you. Told to you. help right guard acquire him. Yeah. Then steps out to his edge responsibility. McKeithen. In his first start, errors in coming off to take the filling nickel rusher. Now, Neal should have stayed down when he saw the edge drop into coverage. Well, there we go. But he's not necessarily wrong. There's a lot of things that happen, and basically what Tiki is saying, that he's trying to explain, you know, the thought process without us knowing what the pass protection is. How about this? Don't get your ass kicked tonight, Evan Neal. Does that work? All right. Make sure that Daniel Jones doesn't get his head taken off by Nick Bosa. I don't care if you're dogging three techniques or pinching down or squatting this. Don't get your quarterback killed tonight. Get in front of that guy and stop him from killing Daniel Jones. Because the only thing worse than uh, having one backup quarterback have to play the rest of the year is two here in New York. And we don't need any more of that. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.